last stop. I'm going to have uh, our last recording with uh, Aisha Waria. I hope I, I got it right from uh, the Kathmandu Living Lab, together with Nama, which is well known, uh, and uh, also with collaboration from, from uh, uh, Nancy Erbstein from uh, the University of California. Namaskar from Nepal. I'm Aishwarya. I'm a research assistant at Kathmandu Living Labs. We are a bunch of civic tech people providing data and technology solutions to better human lives. Kathmandu Living Labs, KLL in short, is a civic tech company that has trained and engaged thousands of people in mapping their local communities in OSF. Our post-disaster response after the 2015 earthquake is still recognized as one of the most successful use cases of open mapping in disaster response so far. As a social enterprise, we provide data and technology to benefit the society. Today, I'm presenting our work on the exploration of OSM as a tool for skill building. So this presentation is in collaboration with Namaraj Baratoki and Nancy Erfstein from KLL and University of California, Davis, respectively. Surprisingly, we bumped into this when we were studying the effects of OSM mapping on the mappers. So this is under the PEER project, which stands for Partnership for Enhanced Engagement and Research, which is funded by USAID and is managed by National Academy of Sciences with scientific input from the US National Science Foundation. Our goal is to understand the phenomenon of open mapping. So OSM currently has over 8 million registered members. During our study, the number was 7 million. Nonetheless, it's a still a huge number. We were wondering that within the OSM community, people contribute in multiple ways editing maps, building the community, developing apps, and so on. However, within the OSM community, these contributions, specifically OSM mapping, is tied to humanitarian causes and is mostly regarded as a form of volunteer service. We wanted to look into the very experience of mapping and found that recent studies hinted that the experience of mapping could be as important as the data contributed. So we looked into a youth mapping internship, digital internship and leadership program, which was conducted in three cohorts. We chose this program because this was in our network, so easy access, and was inclusive in terms of academia, gender, and the locations that these mappers came from. We had a total sample size of 40 mappers. The mappers had written blogs and reports when they were mapping. We used a grounded theory method of coding of these reports and blogs and derived quotes. Here, we found multifaceted effects, irrespective of differences in gender or academia or professional backgrounds. Our first finding was effective learning, which comprises of learning related to learners' personal feelings, attitudes, perceptions, and emotions. Mapping is such a phenomenon that even one person can contribute data that can create a huge impact. Mappers note exactly that. They realize the individual power to bring a change and hence develop self-efficacy. For example, here Mapper says that they are the experience of mapping helped them better understand the incredible reach of just one person's contribution in OSM. Similarly, mappers are also inclined towards OSM ranking. Here, a mapper says that the day they ranked top mapper of Nepal was one of the happiest days of their life. Mappers also developed a sense of identity towards being a part of OSM community. The next one is technical skills and digital literacy. This one's kind of given. Since OSM mapping is a technical process and the mappers are continuously involved in it, evidently they develop an improvement in the technical skills and digital literacy. So here a mapper says that as they were mapping, they got handier with open source software. So cognitive skills, we had not seen this coming. Mappers reported that they were learning decision making, critical thinking, analytical thinking, spatial thinking as they were mapping. This might be in part because of all the inquisitive process of mapping. Here, a mapper says that they were developing spatial awareness as they were mapping. The next one is geographic knowledge. While mapping, mappers notice the different geographical features and structures and relate the lives of people living there. Here, a mapper says that as they were mapping, they could visualize the different living environments. Similarly, mappers develop their knowledge of the use of maps. As people are mapping, their gaps to building can lead to awareness of further use of such OSM data. Here, a mapper talks about the usefulness of maps in governance and infrastructures and for disaster preparedness. Professional skill building is another possibility. The mappers, when they relate OSM to the academia, were improving their professional skills. This was noted despite differences in academic background. We can see examples of OS mappers relating OSM to crisis management, disaster management and sustainable development and architecture, among others. To conclude, we noted multiple skills might be developed by OSM. However, there's still a huge scope of investigation and undoubtedly other categories of benefits that are yet to be identified. Hence, it is worthwhile to reconsider the idea of participatory mapping and its effects on the contributing mappers.
Thank you.